most neurotoxic substance on the planet. And it's widely debated if it should be in dental amalgam fillings or in vaccines. And today we're going to talk to one of the most foremost experts in mercury toxicity, Dr. Boyd Haley. And right now we're, we're broadcasting from the Children's Corner, a school that I had started to keep children away from toxins and also to improve their health through dietary interventions and educating parents. But outside the boundaries of the school, this mercury debate continues to rage on. Just the other day, Thursday, September 7th, Health Day News published an article that said that federal health advisors have rejected a government report suggesting that mercury-containing amalgam dental fillings are safe, saying instead that further study is needed. It goes on to say, in a 13 to 7 vote, the panel said a large federal review of data fails to clearly and objectively present the current body of knowledge on the subject. Now, on the other side, the article goes on to say, our position is one that dentists and patients should have the option and that it's safe and effective for dentists and patients. That's what it says says Ron Zenz, Senior Director of the American Dental Association Council on Scientific Affairs. As the mercury debate rages on, let's educate ourselves with Dr. Boyd Haley in a discussion about how toxic mercury can be. First off, formally, thanks for joining me on the show. You're welcome. You were formally the chair of uh, toxicology, what no, was it? Chemistry. Uh, chemistry for the University of Kentucky. Kentucky. They must be supportive of you. I mean, you're out there uh, very aggressively, at least assertively, advocating every single day. I'm sure they get, do they get feedback back from the medical establishment that, that they ward off, or what it has it Yes, well, they, <clears throat> both uh, my dean and other people told me that, uh, for example, the two deans of the dental school that have been deans since I've been there both tried to do <clears throat> something to me or have them do something about me. But it doesn't work. They file charges against me, and uh, we have meetings. And I, and I do everything straight up. It's all public science through refereed journals. I do it exactly right. And they just don't like what I'm saying, but they can't say that I'm doing it wrong. Uh, I'm sure there are people who would like me to shut up. But uh, you know, the thing is there's academic freedom. The University of Kentucky, to its credit, has supported me in that, and especially the Dean of Arts and Sciences. Has been a, you know, not a, you know, he doesn't come up and say he thinks I'm right, but he, like he says, if you don't believe him, have a debate. Go out and see who can convince the public. And of course, the the dental associations and the medical associations run away from any open debate about you know the toxicity of mercury that people are exposed to from vaccines and dentistry. Well, let's talk about dentistry for a minute. Yeah. Now, um, why? <clears throat> yeah, let, let's talk about dentistry for a minute. <laughs> I went in to have an estimate done on getting the silver mercury fillings out of my mouth, $4,200 people, $4,200 to fix the garbage toxic waste that they embedded into my jaw. Okay, so that's what I have to say about dentistry. <laughs> that's just one area. When did mercury first get into amalgams? What were they thinking? Well, it's a, it's a very, very old process. Uh, in the early uh, 1800s, there were group, there was a, a, a couple called Concourse Brothers. Now you better understand the French invented, I mean the Chinese invented amalgams, and we're using them a long time ago. But uh, the Concourse Brothers were in Paris, and they were they were driven out of Paris, asked to leave, because the Europeans at that time knew that exposure to mercury uh, caused mental retardation. You know, back in the 1800s. Yeah, in the early 1800s. So then they went to London, and then they were ran out of London, and they came to the United States. And in the United States, we didn't have such a, you know, a vested and well-established medical association, and so uh, they actually out survived the American College of uh, uh, Dental Surgeons, who you had to sign a thing saying you wouldn't put mercury in anybody's mouth because they thought it was toxic, because they could do them cheap. Mercury kills the nerves, so when you put a mercury in a, you know, a, a cavity, it not only filled the cavity, you know, it made the nerves in the cavity, you know, lose their uh, sensitivity and so it worked really well yeah and let me chime in here too um it kills everything it touches not just the nerve in your jaw Every, all the tissue that mercury gets to it attacks it and kills it if you watch the um brain neuron de degeneration video that i have on my youtube you'll see 
just how scary it is when mercury is introduced into a platelet with um, brain neurons in it. It's scary. It's it's a it's a horror movie. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut this video off. I just wanted to um, for some reason video myself listening to the Autism One radio. Um, I think it's something that people should do. If you don't know about it, it's Autism One O N E radio. Um, I believe it's autismradio.com. I'm not sure. It's on my um, top friends list. Crap, I'll have to get it back to you. But it's Autism One Radio. Just Google it or Good Search it. Good Search is a um, is a new thing that I'd also like everyone to try to use more. It's G O O D S E A R C H dot com, and you can donate money to charities by actually um, just using them as a search engine rather than Google or Yahoo or something like that. So um, try that out. Help some people out while you're searching for things. And um, listen to the Autism One radio. And uh, I'll get back at you.